You guys, have you guys ever seen an olive tree? I bought uh, two little olive trees. They were at Trader Joe's in Reading when I was down there moving Ava down for BSSM for her first year. And I just felt this like, oh, I want these olive trees. They're so beautiful. So I purchased two of them, brought them home. They're only one year old. They have olives on them. They have olives on them. I looked it up this morning, and it takes three to five years, typically, for an olive tree to get fruit on it. And within one year, we have olives. And the Lord spoke so clearly to me when I looked at those olives yesterday morning in my bathrobe with my coffee. I, looked, I saw these little olives, and the Lord said, you're entering into your most fruitful season. <laughs> And I know that word was not just for me. It was for you. And I'm here to tell you, the world may be crying famine, but the spirit of heaven is crying over you right now, fruitfulness, 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 where things that would normally take three to five years to develop, business ideas, strategies, ways to store up money, invest money are now going to be taking shorter and shorter amounts of time. Do you believe it? Because the Lord is looking for people who will take him at his word and run with it. And I believe Isaiah 60 verse 5, it says that the brilliance of your shining, the church's brilliance will draw the wealth of the nations. If we're just as down as the world is down about this economy, we're not shining brilliantly. We shine brilliantly when we are subject, subjected to heaven's economy, the abundance of heaven, the multiplication of the bread and fish, this, this super abundance where like God chose a widow to provide for a prophet. He didn't choose a king, he didn't choose a businessman, he chose a widow. Why does he cho choose the least? Why did he choose a little boy with a little lunch? Because he loves to show off. And he loves to have you take mountains that you can't take on your own. He loves to have you slay giants you can't slay on your own. That's why he stripped Gideon down to a 300-person army to take down an army of thousands. You're feeling stripped right now? You're feeling like things have been taken away? You're feeling like the numbers are lower? Get excited. Start celebrating, because God's about to do something huge over you. God's about to grow some olives in your life. God's about to produce some oil and some flour that will never run dry. This is the season that we're in. And I felt like the spirit of the Lord is hovering right now over the church. And the spirit of the Lord is looking for those who will trust him at his word. Looking for those, like Ben said, that will get their skin in the game. Looking for those that will say, you know what, Lord, I don't, the bank account is, it looks terrible right now. I don't know how this is going to work, but thank you, Jesus. You're in charge. You're in control. And actually, money is something we're never supposed to be worried about. I mean, there's a lot to worry about, right? I, I always tell Ben, it's like, I can find things to worry about. That's just, I, 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 str I have struggled in the past with anxiety. That's been my, my thing, and I didn't even know it until I went and saw a counselor, and she's like, wow, you, you have some major anxiety. I was like, what? No, I'm a woman of faith. I'm a woman of faith. And she's like, no. No. How many of you know that God's after wholeness, body, soul, and spirit? And there's a lot of spiritual bypassing where there's issues in our soul that are not being dealt with. And we've got to tackle that anxiety. We've got to tackle those soul issues and, and get them whole, get them healthy. Don't just spiritually bypass and then you're making... You know, you're burning bridges and relationships are broken and it's like, God is good. No. Body, soul, and spirit. Yes. 
So, I spoke last time about intercession, the call to intercession. How many of you feel this call, this burning to pray? Oh my goodness. Started in me in January, Ben talked about it. We went up to a conference and on the way up, we were driving there and I was like, Ben, why are we going to another conference? We are so burned out right now. <laughs> and that's real. See, it's okay for pastors and leaders to be real. Actually, you know what's worse is when a pastor or leader gets up here and says, my life is perfect, I don't have any issues, because they're placing themselves on a pedestal that you can never reach, and then you leave feeling worse off than when you came. I'm not perfect. I, I know I can't do anything on my own, but I'm leaning on my beloved. I'm leaning on my beloved. So we're driving up to this conference, and we get there, and... Oh my goodness, it was like we got an IV of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> it was like we got hooked up, like Evan said the other day, the Holy Ghost IV. It was like we got hooked up and we started to burn again. We started to have passion again. We started to remember why we started. We started to get this holy passion and this fervency and this zeal for the house. And we just, it was like, it was like we, we went there burned out and left on fire. And that same thing that happened at that conference is gonna happen this next week. People who've been burned out, tired, frustrated, done with church, are gonna come in one way and leave a different way. I know because the Lord's told me. I know because I've been praying every Thursday night since I got set on fire. I've been coming here with a small team of like 25 people and we pray together, we contend, I, we lay on the floor and weep, we lay on the floor and laugh. We just, we say, Jesus, every time we're gonna partner with you, we're gonna carry your burden with you tonight, and we wanna pray what you're praying. Because the Holy Spirit is making intercession for us right now. Jesus is actually praying for you right now. The reason you're seated here today is probably because Jesus prayed you into that seat. It's not a coincidence. Your life is not a coincidence. The fact that you're here is not a coincidence. It's holy. This is holy ground. And so we've been making intercession every Thursday night. And, and the last time I shared, I talked about this call to intercession. And today, I want to talk about the intercession that takes. Because there has been this I mentioned it last time I spoke, this holy hot tub of intercession, which is wonderful. But the holy hot tub needs to turn into a river. Amen? It's not about us just coming and receiving, right? Moses was an intercessor. Moses went before the Lord face to face. He saw the Lord face to face, and that's beautiful. We need the Moses moments. We need to be face to face with God. Intercession is about us just loving him and spending time with him. And I've just wept under his presence thinking, I can speak with the living God. Like I can, I can commune with the living God. Like this is just an amazing gift. There's no more veil. I'm standing in the throne room. I don't have to pray to see your face. I can look at the beauty of your face right now. It's intercession is such a gift because it's face to face with God. And Abraham, Abraham was an intercessor. And he, he believed God at his word. Intercession is about believing God. God, you said to do this conference, we're going to do it. No matter what the opposition holds, no matter what happens, we're going to do it. God, you said to start that business, we're going to do it. God, you said to send to homeschool my kids because I'm seeing what's happening in the school system. And God blesses it because you're believing him, you're taking him at his word. It says that Abraham's belief was counted to him as righteousness. There's a beautiful thing that happens in intercession because we are so expectant that he's gonna answer because we know that he hears every cry. Intercession is a gift. It, it's a place where we lose all the stuff. The things of this earth, they just grow strangely dim. 
And now we're seated on the th- this, this place with Jesus on the throne, and we're, we're declaring things out that we want to see in the world, and we're, we're petitioning the Father for things that need, we need breakthrough in. And, and so Abraham and Moses, they both made intercession in different ways. Abraham's intercession was just believing God. Do you remember when God said, I am going to bring down fire on Sodom and Gomorrah because it is bad. There's so much sin and grime there. I've got to just cleanse. I've got to cleanse that whole area. And Adam says, Lord, friend. Adam was a, (laughs) Abraham was a friend of God. He said, God, if there were just 50 people that were righteous, would you spare the city? And God said, yes, for you, Abraham, because you're my friend, I'll spare the city. And Abraham pushes him a little further. He goes, God, for 30, would you spare the city for 30? And God says, yes, Abraham, for 30, for you. I would would stop it. And Abraham says, what about 10? See, Abraham's pushing. He's pushing. He's contending. He has such a confidence in his God and such a love affair that he knows he can change the mind of God. This is not manipulation, this is friendship. Why would we not step into intercession for our country? Why would we not step into intercession for the bride when we know we can change the heart of God? Moses went face to face before the Lord. He comes down with the tablets and the Israelites, are they've built this golden calf and they're worshiping this false god and Moses and God says I'm going to destroy them all and Moses says please please don't and it actually says in Exodus that God repented he changed the way he thought because of his friendship with Moses do we realize the influence we have on God's heart If we did, wouldn't we be praying together? Wouldn't we be spending every moment of the day interceding? In Psalm 109, David wrote this. He says, I've done nothing to them, but they still surround me with their venomous words of hatred and vitriol. Though I love them, they stand accusing me like Satan for what I've never done. And what's his response to false accusations and hatred? I will pray until I become prayer itself. You see, David had a revelation that we're not just going to a one-hour prayer room, although those are beautiful. We're not just going to a prayer meeting, although I I, want to change the word prayer meeting to prayer breakthrough nights, right? But we are 24-7 walking prayer rooms on the earth. That our lives, we now have the capacity and the ability, like in 2 Corinthians 3, it talks about the former glory. Like Ben was saying, the former glory on Moses, it made his face shine. When he came down off the mountain, people were like, whoa, your face is shining. What happened? Well, he was face to face with God. And then in 2 Corinthians 3, it says, how much more greater glory now that that old covenant of the law has been stripped and it's done. And now we have stepped into the new covenant of glory with Jesus Christ. This glory that's been released over us is far greater than the former glory. I'm just at this place, guys, where I I am restless without him. I am restless. I am restless if I'm not in prayer. I am restless if I don't see revival. I'm restless if I don't see intercession start rising up in the church. There are so many things the world is trying to get our attention, right? Like, and you're feeling restless, but it's because God's calling you into prayer. You're feeling the restlessness. We felt it during COVID. We felt it during the rioting. We felt this restless. It's a restlessness. It's because God's calling us deeper into prayer. But what I wanted to talk about today is Joshua. 
Because Joshua had a prayer life where he took ground. It wasn't just believing God at his word, which is beautiful. It wasn't just face-to-face time with God. It was, okay, Lord, what ground can I take for heaven? It's the grace that takes. And so think about this for a second. The Israelites are in the wilderness. They have a grace to receive. Moses has a grace to receive. He's in the presence. He gets to see the glory of God go before him. He's re- they're, they're receiving manna. They're receiving quail. It's all about receiving. And that's beautiful. But when Moses dies and Joshua takes over, the grace now is not about receiving. It's about taking. But the children of Israel were still stuck in receiving. And Joshua says, come on, guys, we can take the land. There's giants there, but look at the fruit. Look at the milk and honey. I mean, this is amazing. This is what God has promised. And this incredible gift of grace to take was denied because those giants look too big. And the land, it looked beautiful and amazing, but they couldn't see the grace to take. I'm here to tell you we can mistake a season of taking as a season of sitting back and miss out on something God is doing. Whether it be previous experiences, whether it be disappointments in the past, whether it be pain, we can miss an opportunity to eat the fruit of the land, to drink the milk and honey, because we still think we're in the wilderness. And God is, he's brought us to this Jordan, guys. He's brought us this place where he said, consecrate yourself, start praying, because you're about to step into something. You're about to step into an abundance that you've never seen before. <laughs> When the famine hit Egypt, Joseph was ready. Why? Because he had stayed in this place of make my life a prayer, Lord. Make my life a prayer. A dream comes from Pharaoh. I have the interpretation. I have the strategy to store up the food for the nations. God is looking for his make my life a prayer people. But I think sometimes when I say this, make my life a prayer, I think people think, okay, now I have to sell everything, buy a brown robe, (laughs) get a staff, go live on a mountain somewhere, leave my family, and that's not it. Prayer is all the time, 24-7, and, I'll, and I want to encourage you guys, because I read this in a book called Red Moon Rising. If you have not gotten that book, buy it. Red Moon Rising. It's about prayer and intercession. I want to read this to you guys. It's called Examine Prayer. This prayer was from many, many years ago. And um, I can't remember the saint that came up with this. But it's called Examine Prayer. And Examine Prayer is simply about noticing Noticing the good gifts that God gives. Noticing the presence of God in our lives. Noticing the ways that we fail God. And when we notice, we become more conscious. And when we become more conscious, we grow. And it's through this discipline that we are actually rewired to live more gratefully and become more like Jesus. So what this guy is saying is that examine prayer is less about perfection of prayer. It's less about... Um, buying the brown robe and living on the mountain, and although if you feel God says to do that, do it. But I'm all about accessible prayer right now. I'm all about like, I can be communing with God right now even as I'm speaking to you. And this is how examine prayer works. 
examine prayer starts with recall and rejoice. You might want to write these down because this is these are like practical tools you can do in the morning. Or if you pray at night, you can do this at night. Recall and rejoice. Recall and rejoice. What, ha what happened today? Okay, God, you thinking about your day. What happened today? What was good today? Where were you today, God? All of a sudden, you might, you might be um, sitting there like, man, today was terrible. Today was awful. Like, you know, I had this to do, and I failed here, and it was awful. Now, all of a sudden, you're switching gears, and your spirit's now going, God, where were you? What was good today? You're sw you see how you're going from negative into this place of, like, positive <laughs> excitement? So you start there, recall and rejoice, review and repent. What was bad today? What attitudes or words or actions do I need to apologize for today? And then it's as easy as going, Father, forgive me. I shouldn't, have, I shouldn't have reacted that way. I shouldn't have gotten so angry. I shouldn't have gotten patient with that person. Just forgive me. And then receive his forgiveness. Step outside of shame, because shame is, it's not going to take you into the promised land. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. We got to get rid of shame. We just receive his forgiveness, and we step back into who we truly are. And then receive and resolve what do I need to do to make amends and work out my repentance with others? Maybe I lost my temper with someone. Maybe I said something terrible to my husband. Now's my opportunity because I recalled what was good. I realized what I might have done wrong. I'm going to go back to him and say, you know what, honey? I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. That was bad. That's prayer. It's about noticing God. It's about noticing my own heart. It's about noticing where I'm, I'm misaligned. It's practical. It's easy. Jesus' formula for prayer. Like, the disciples are like, man, Jesus, your prayer life is amazing. I just want to learn from you. Tell me how to pray. And so he, he starts out with, you know, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be your name. And he, he goes through this whole prayer. But you know what he talks about also is sincerity over pretending. Don't, don't pray these prayers without having your heart involved. Like, pray your heart. Even if it's like Hannah, and you look drunk, and you're weeping, and you're like, God, why? Just pray it. God wants it. He wants it all. Jesus wants it. He wants sincerity over perfection. There's a secret place reward. In other words, if things in your life aren't secret, like, keep some stuff hidden with God. Don't look for your reward here on earth and blast it all over Instagram, and then you don't get anything in heaven. Jesus is like, you, they have their reward here on earth already. It's basically about getting attention and notoriety when really we're just here to make Jesus famous, right? We're not here to make ourselves famous. That's not what this is about. We're here to make him famous. We're here to be so imperfect that people are like, wow, I see the perfection of Jesus in you. <laughs> That's what it's about. Father already knows before you ask. Jesus said, don't, don't plead with the Father. I mean, obviously, we're, we can ask the Father anything. But do we have the revelation he already knows what we need before we ask? Fasting, forgiveness. Like, these are all powerful things to introduce into our prayer life. We, we've got to operate in forgiveness so that our prayers can be pure. Fasting. Fasting is a powerful way to, to I would say, accelerate your prayers. Um, I, I'm on these uh, very specific vitamins that I take for the season of life that I'm in. And so I don't fast 24 hours a day, but I started fasting 20 hours a day back on the 29th of June, 30 days before the conference. And I can tell you that, man, I've been having very clear dreams. I can hear the voice of the Lord so clearly, like, Something happens when we fast, when we give up those things that the flesh is so longing for, and we let our spirits start to press in when we feel that hunger, right? It's beautiful. So, um, okay, 
Back to Joshua. So Joshua is making intercession through his strength and courage. So we've, we've talked about believing God. We've talked about face-to-face -face with God. And now we're talking about being strong and courageous with God. So God brought the children of Israel to the borders of this land. And he said, okay, it's time to take it. And the children of Israel were like, nope, not going to do it. And I felt today so strongly to release over you. And why don't you guys stand up? Because this is, I felt like there was just this prophetic, this prophetic word for you guys, for our church, for this city, for this region. Yes. <laughs> you are the Joshua generation. You are at the place where people only dreamed about being where you are right now. People prayed to be in the place that you are at right now in this time of history. And I just release over you the eyes to see and the ears to hear what the Lord is doing right now, the times and season. And I pray right now that you would be filled with the strength and courage like Joshua that you would step outside of this comfortability of this place where it's felt like I can just live here forever. And the Lord is telling you right now that his presence is going before you into the places that you've longed for. And it's not the time to stay in this wilderness season. It's not the time to, to lay back and, and just say, okay, Lord, whatever. But it's time to partner with him and cross the Jordan into the promised land. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. And I just want to break off this fear of failure, this fear of um, not having enough, this fear of, well, Lord, what if we go in there and then we're defeated? This is not a bait and switch tactic by God. God is good all the time. And he's saying to you right now, do you trust in my goodness? Do you trust in my nature? Do you trust in my character to take you in to where you've always longed to be? So we just say yes, Lord. We just say yes. We, we respond to your cry right now from heaven to be your intercessors that take, take the ground for you. We know that it comes through rest. We know that your warfare is rest. We know that we can just circle around a city and pray, and we can even be in silence, and that city will crumble. So we thank you, Lord, for the intimacy, for the closeness that you're bringing right now. We thank you, Lord, that we can't do anything apart from you. And I just want us to declare this together. Say this, say, I am a believing, abiding, strong and courageous intercessor. When I cry out to God, he hears me. When I pray, I am face to face with God. When I pray, things change. When I pray, history is changed. When I pray, anxiety is banished and fear is dissolved. When I pray, I become strong and courageous. My prayers are a brass knuckle on the doors of heaven. And I will not stop knocking. I will not stop asking. Because God is quick to bring justice and avenge every sorrow on my behalf. I am filled with the fullness of the Holy Spirit because of my perfect Father in heaven. Amen. Will you guys pray with me? Amen.
I want to close, but I want to spend some time. If someone can come up and just play the keys for me, that would be amazing. But I just want to spend some time of consecration with the Lord. And will you guys pray? Will you pray for, we're, we're going after three things with the 72 hours of prayer right now for this conference. And number one is revival fire. The only answer for what's happening in the world is revival. There's no other answer. It's, it's not an amazing speaker. It's not an amazing church service. It's not an, even an amazing meeting together. It's the power of God on display that takes a hold of people's hearts and spreads like wildfire wherever we go. The revival fire, number one, is what we're praying for. Number two is the, the protection over this conference, protection over the leaders, the guest speakers, the people that are coming. Satan does not want intercessors. Satan does want, not want his church to be saying, Lord, make my life a prayer. You know who the greatest intercessor was? It was Jesus, who on the cross said, Father, forgive them. He was making intercession for you and me. And the third thing is we're praying for a financial waterfall. We're praying for the more than enough God to come through on this conference. We need more money to come in for this conference. We have stepped out in faith because we, we're, we're operating on a word from the Lord to do this. But I'm telling you guys what, the finances don't line up. So we need to pray for the financial waterfall to flow over this place, over the families, over everyone involved with this conference. And I just want to, I want to ask just me personally, will you pray with me? Will you, will, you, will you contend for this? Will you contend for revival in this region with me? So put your hands up. We thank you, Father, for the Joshua's and Caleb's here. We thank you, Lord, that you've equipped us for this time, this season. Lord, we know that you've, you've called us to cross rivers we can't cross without your presence. We know that you've called us to take mountains that we can't take without your presence. And we thank you, Jesus, that you promised to never leave or forsake us. We just love you. We love you. And if you're feeling a burning in your heart to pray, if you're feeling this, this spirit of intercession coming on you, I want you to come forward right now. Just come forward right now. I just want to pray for you personally. I want to, I want to impart intercession to you. I want to give you what the Lord's given me. I signed up for the 3 a.m. prayer time. That is not me. I don't like waking up in the middle of the night. But I feel so strongly the Lord's going to meet me there. There is a sacrifice with intercession, but the reward is so much greater because it's time with Him, it's communion. And so, Holy Spirit, would you come as a spirit of intercession over every person here today? Would you come on them, Lord? Even as groaning, the whole earth is groaning for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God, for the intercessors. We hear the groan of heaven. We hear the groan of the earth. Would you come on them, Holy Spirit? Would you come on us anew? Come fresh on us. Would you come as joy? Would you come with the joy of our salvation? Would you come again? Spirit of intercession is joy. The laughter, the joy that's the strength that protects us like a stronghold. Oh, would you come? Oh, like the spirit of intercession that walks with God, that communes with God 24-7.
a walking prayer room. Lord, that you would make us like Enoch, who walked with God, who communed with you, who was approved by you because he was so hungry, so yearning for your presence that nothing could satisfy him. Thank you for the spirit of intercession, Lord. I pray for the revelation that we have influence on your heart, Jesus, that we can change your mind, that we can stand in the gap for those who have even mistreated us, for those that are wicked and going down their own paths of destruction. We can stand in the gap and cry out like Abraham cried and said, no, Lord, spare them, Lord, spare them, Jesus and pray for their souls. I pray for a salvation intercession to hit. I pray that we would cry out for lost souls. That, Father, when you come and say, what do you want? We would say, lost souls, Father. That's all we want, lost souls. We just want souls and more souls. Let that spirit of intercession come. Thank you, Lord. And Father, we agree that this is not a one-day event, but there's an impartation happening right now that will be lasting, that this is actually the beginning of the conference. This is actually the beginning of a, we're being marked right now for intercession, that this is the moment that we will remember as God, you met me, God, you met me. Many of you right now are saying, I've never felt his presence. You're going to feel it right now. You're going to feel it right now. The Holy Spirit's going to come on you. You're going to feel it. It's not going to feel fake anymore. It's not going to feel like a bait and switch tactic. The Holy Spirit is on you right now from the top of your head to the bottoms of your feet. The presence of the Lord. That's the presence of the Lord. Many of you are being healed right now. You might not even know it, but you're going to go home and realize. <laughs> or you're going to go to the doctor and realize. Because God needs healthy intercessors. Yeah, he needs his prayer warriors healthy. Ho! Lord, make our lives prayer. Ho! <laughs> I believe the reason why Enoch was swept up is because him and God became so mingled they couldn't become separated any longer. Because earth and heaven had become so mingled, Enoch had to go be swept up. Lord, mingle us! Mingle us! So there's no... there's pe People will be, look at us and not be able to discern, is this a person or is this God? Ho! Ho! The presence of Jesus till our faces glow, till we're transfigured. She cut obo so doroma. We want more. We're restless. We're restless. We're restless. We're not giving up. And I pray for a longevity of prayer. I pray that we would not become tired. Ho! But you would fill us with a power and an anointing like Jesus in the wilderness. 40 days and 40 nights, fasting, tempted, and he comes out more endued with power. I release that over you right now. Endowment of power. Ho, oh, that this wilderness season is over. That you are coming out right now more endued with power. Ho, oh, you're coming out stronger. You're coming out more powerful. You're coming out with more faith. You are ready. Shikaro bo sodoro mashitera. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's a cry coming up. There's a cry rising up. There's a cry rising up. Oh, we're not going to be embarrassed about who's around us anymore. We're not going to be embarrassed. We're not going to hesitate. Oh, there's a sound. 
there's a sound, there's a sound. Oh, it's a war cry. 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 Oh, let your sound arise. Let your sound. Yeah, I see the Jesus breathing into you, fresh boldness. Receive the Holy Spirit, your fresh boldness. Oh, power and boldness. You're going to wake up tomorrow and go, wow, what I used to be afraid of, I'm not afraid of anymore. Yeah. The spirit of intercession is here. Will you guys join me on Thursday night? I want this place packed out. I want to pray like this for an hour on Thursday night before the conference. This is not the time for 20 intercessors in a church. This is a time for 400 intercessors. And you are an intercessor. Because if Jesus is an intercessor, that makes you one. <laughs> 